Hello, it's the Anfield Wrap. It's John Givens hosting this week, and I'm joined by Paula Murphy, by Johnny Melvin, and by Dan Morgan uh, to look ahead to what should be a really exciting week. Now, Liverpool are a lucky club. We're lucky to have a long, illustrious history, but we are starting what could be one of the best weeks in our recent history, at least, as we all get to watch the Reds lift the Premier League trophy on Wednesday night. It promises to be like nothing else we've ever seen before, and it's on the TV for free, so the whole world can see it. Uh, so we'll be looking forward to it. You're forward to it, Paula? I am. I really am. I mean, it's a two-pronged attack for me because if the season had gone as normal, then I, w- I would have missed it because it would have been May. I mean, obviously, we were going to do it anyway. So the fact that I'm here, but I'm like 20 miles down the road and can't go and have a pint around the corner and a pie is, is a little bit of a killer. But I really am looking forward to it. The fact that everyone can see this, I think, is going to be really good and obviously you know i i live most of the year in egypt and I, and all the kids at school have been emailing me saying they can't wait they're all tuning in so that'll be good yeah it's look it's not how any of us wants to johnny but i like that they're using the opportunity to do something a little bit different you know this thing that they're building into the cock that a few we're getting a few grainy images of on social media and things like that and it's going to be sort of spectacular what they've planned and you know it's, it's a good opportunity to be unbearable wednesday night mate <laughs> <laughs> which is my one of my specialisms yeah I, I, I think it, it, it is good that they're trying to do something a bit different i think the uh, being on a centre circle with a little platform and some, some confetti cannons in an empty stadium probably would have... Um, I don't think it could ever be underwhelming given how long we've waited and what we've been through, but I just think visually it wouldn't look great. But the idea that the cop will be uh, adorned with all of the banners, this brilliant platform behind it, it, it won't have that sense of um, a big empty space in the, in the way that it, that it would have been. Was it Schalke won a trophy in Germany and they got presented it in an empty stadium and it just looked a little bit limp. So I think I'm, uh, I'm really, really excited about it. I'm certainly more excited about it than the match, to be honest with you. I've been... Um, uh, I've been half joking saying winning the league this early is a bit shit, but it is a little bit shit really because the, the games have lost an awful lot of their edge and meaning for me. So uh, I, I'm all about Wednesday night, but whatever time, maybe about quarter to 10, 10 o'clock, something like that. Just cannot wait. Cannot wait to see it. Yeah, it, it, it could be a really spectacular image, Dan. It's, um, I remember you know, the Real Madrid, well, I mean, they've stopped it now, but when Stephen Manaman was over there, sort of that era, and they all used to do, they used to do a big parade, and then it'd finish a, a statue in the centre of Madrid, and they'd all climb up the statue. I mean, I, I, don't, know if, I don't know whether it was for sort of health and safety reasons, or whether because, I think the council just said, you, you need to stop climbing on our statue. You know, <laughs> but it's a big, it's a big, it was a big fountain in town, wasn't it? And on all the, on all the players would be on different levels of this thing, and it looks sort of spectacular, and as I say, it's, it stopped it, but there's a there's an opportunity not quite to do that but but to to have it sort of on the cop and, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the boys at kind of you know at, at different levels I don't know who's going to make it all the way to 306 um, but you know it, it is it is an opportunity to do something visually quite spectacular. Yeah, I mean, I'm bang up for seeing Sadio Mane on Silla's head in the middle of town, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that was ever a possibility. Uh, bang that on. Yeah, Trent stood on top of Elmer Rigby. But I'm, I'm into it. Bobby, Let's Bobby do that. Bobby with Queen Victoria's car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Google that if you're not sure what we mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, um, I, think, I think the thing I've found even in the manner in which we've won the title, is that there's the sort of the sort of three celebrations when you win the title, and it's very rare that they happen at the same time. Obviously, there's the there's the moment you win it, and then there's the trophy lift, and then there's the eventual parade. And ours have been so spaced out um, that we've sort of been able to prepare for all three. And I was always looking forward to the trophy lift the most. And I think Robertson spoke about it this week, didn't he? He said, when you win a cup... In a stadium, you know, you're getting a trophy there and then. So the wait for this, I think it's been telling in the players. I think they've mm-hmm. been, I think they've carried the weight of this this title win as much as us, even more so in some cases. Um, you know, we're seeing how much it means to them now. So for them to sort of to have the corroboration of being of being league title winners for us, but also for themselves. You think about how they've sort of try to embed their legacy as a as a as a great side. To do that you have to win a league title. You have to win the competition that, that it takes you nine months of a season to complete. So for them that the the sort of burden release everything for, for those for those players 
come Wednesday night is going to be absolutely huge. And and I think they feel it as well. They they feel you know the Liverpool support throughout the world. Not not just people who would be in Anfield but can't. They they feel everybody um, around the globe. They feel their their joy and their ecstasy at this. So that that will be that will be carrying them and be present with them on on Wednesday night. I'm sure. Yeah, um, I've been reading up on on what's sort of going on, and uh, I think a few people, as we know, uh, know that Kenny's been involved. I really like this line I read. Um, I, I think it was from the Echo, uh, where it says a special podium has been erected on the cop with the legendary Sir Kenny Kenny Daglish on hand to deliver the wedding winners' medals alongside Premier League CEO Richard Masters. And I just hope Richard gets the fuck out the way, Paul. Let's you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> if there's ever, if there, I mean, I've done gigs before when no one's interested in me. Do you know what I mean? And it's best to take a step back. He can he can hold the medals. What uh, what is the saying? Let's hope he reads the room. You know. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, it, I mean that's the one thing that has really pleased me is that the players know this isn't what they've worked their careers for. They know that, but they're going with it anyway, and they're going with the best of it, and they're looking forward to it. And I don't think we can we can expect more than that. And I think it's a really great touch that Kenny's given them the trophy. So let's just hope. My only worry, and I, 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 I sort of don't even want to say this, is what is Henderson going to wear? I've been, I literally woke up. I don't sleep well at the best of times. I, <laughs> I woke up about four o'clock this morning and I just, in my head, I just went, John Teddy, full kit wanker. I hope he doesn't. I, and I don't know what I'm expecting, but I hope, I hope we're all right with it. That's the only thing, because I'd hate, for us to go, oh, but Jordan, no, what was he wearing? I'd hate for it to be a bit mad, that's all. I think the shinies is the tipping point for me. <laughs> Sorry. That's that's what I'd say. Do you know what I mean? Like he needs to yeah. match what everyone else is wearing. Yeah. You know, yeah. but, but I think I think I think for me, Melbourne, it's 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 just just leave them shinies, mate, and you should be all right. <laughs> uh, but I, I think the one thing new balance, obviously RIP New Balance are gonna be out of the picture in the next few weeks. They have made some Unbelievable Liverpool kits. We've had probably the best sustained run of kits uh, under New Balance. But I, I've always been a bit of a fan for the training gear I bought. I don't really buy kits, but I do like to buy the training gear for like playing five aside and, and going go to the gym and stuff. So I, I, I really think if, if Jordan's got a decent New Balance rig out on some decent webs and and, and, and allow him to wear the shirt, the match shirt, mm-hmm. with maybe champ, you know. Champions 1920 shirts they all got given it at um, a Formby Hall. I think that would be absolutely fitting and absolutely sound. Yeah. But, but I'm with you, I'm with you, Paula. I'm not really into the idea of him because because Terry has gone down in folklore. Like there, there are people all over the world being accused of doing a John Terry. You know, yeah, Jordan, exactly. It's a thing. Following those <laughs> so we, we don't want Jordan yeah. to become a meme. We want him to no. be regarded as one of the best captains in our, exactly. our history. So, uh, so I, I, I hope he judges it right. So if, you, if you're watching Jordan. Tops fine, that's about it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Yeah, I mean, he, 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 he loves it. Watches on YouTube. Do you know what I mean? Can't really, can't really get podcasts, but he's uh, watches on YouTube. Um, Dan, I mean, it's. I mean, they might do sorts of some 1920 gear. Who knows? I mean, again, Real Madrid. I keep 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 going back to them today. You know, they were they were sort of. Um, I, I always seem to have these ready-made t-shirts sort of available. I know they were all there for the for the party in uh, in Formby Hall when they did this sort of 1920 stuff. So wouldn't wouldn't uh, wouldn't surprise me to see a bit of that, or just something they've got to flog. But they brought out like a new green training kit. I thought cheeky that by by New Balance. Like when the project restart came on board, next they launched the new like aqua green training kit, which they've actually been working wearing in the in the uh, in the last spell of the season. I thought fair play to ring in every little last bit of dough out of the out of the uh, of the opportunity. But it's, as I said, they brought up some really really smart gear. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's something <laughs> custom made and, and on hand for them to wear. The players are looking forward to it, aren't they, Paula? And that's really yeah. nice to see. Uh, we were having a laugh this morning about Virgil van Dijk's Twitter. Uh, yeah. he's, he's, he's woke up on, on a Monday morning raring <laughs> to go and feeling like he's, you know, he's, he's got a big shiny thing um, to lift this week. Um, and I, I know he's not the only one. I noticed Jeannie's Instagram over the weekend, you know, talking about it. You know, this is the big thing that they're looking forward to now and, yeah, made up for them on it. I know, as I say, they've got every right to feel, I'll, I'll use the word aggrieved, but, you know, we understand the circumstances. They've got every right to feel, oh God, trust it to be us that's getting the sort of, you know, watered down version. 
but of of the presentation and and what what I love about them is is they get how important it is to us and and they get that we're also feeling a bit oh god you know trust us so they're sort of feeling it on our behalf as well which is brilliant because I think there's players in other clubs who would literally only be bothered about themselves they wouldn't give a damn about the fans and ours do so he's really started the week off that that tweet he put out this morning was absolutely hilarious um you might have to retweet it john but it's basically <laughs> a, a fella getting out of a car and just giving it large with the dancing as the car drives yeah. and it's a really morning red so uh yeah it's great that they're all sort of bang up for the build up to Wednesday and that, that we have a good a good time and a good chat and a good reminisce between now and Wednesday because I think that's really important. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a moment for them, isn't it, Johnny, to to remember the sort of the journey they've been on, not just this season, but for a few seasons now, really. And you know, you talk about looking forward to this more than the game. I think the players are probably the same. I mean, they want to put on a show in the game because no one wants to lift the trophy after you've got beat. But at the same time, I'm sure, you know, it's it's this that they're talking about in training rather than sort of, you know, oh, oh can't wait to can't wait to play against Chelsea. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think um, when when you you see. The, what, I think we've got unprecedented access now to the team in terms of the stuff that LFC TV do, what the YouTube team do. You feel as though you, you know these players best than perhaps you've known previous incarnations of Liverpool because you've seen these inside training videos. You've seen the stuff that goes on on a match day even when they're in the tunnel and, and, and before and after the game. So I think, we, we and, and they've also been allowed to express their own personalities through like the... Um, the coconut water adverts, and the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the other things that we've done. And, and, and I suppose it's dead easy to like a team who were successful because like, if, they were do, if they were doing that coconut water and finishing eighth in the league, I'm sure we would be like a little bit more, a little bit more human with them. But we've got a great team of players who are very, very hard to dislike. And, and you just feel as though you can imagine what it's like in Melwood there this morning. What, what they'll all be bouncing into the bouncing in, letting on to the dinner ladies, all after the yeah. <laughs> You just know that there'll be a real sort of, um, real nice atmosphere around the place this week and they'll all be, um, I imagine, winding Henderson up, maybe even telling him he can't lift the trophy. I mean, I, I can just imagine it'll be an absolutely incredible atmosphere. Yeah, Dan, it's nice to see a few, a few of the interviews knocking about as well. And uh, Andy Robertson did an interview for the official website over the over the weekend, which I enjoyed. It wasn't just talking about this; it was talking about a, a few different things. His journey, actually, you know, and he was he was having a laugh saying, "I think the summer where they signed me, Mo Salah, and Oxley Chamberlain, that I was the one that maybe uh, the fans were least excited about," which was sort <laughs> of you know probably probably accurate, you know, if we're all looking back. But he also you know talked about Wednesday, and he said he, he it's quote here from he says can't wait he says obviously when we won the Champions League last year you get the trophy in a matter of minutes after the game and then you don't let go of it so we've had three weeks to um to wait um but it will be able, uh, but to see Hendo lift the trophy is above his head will be emotional and I think that word emotional that he's used is uh, is a is a good one and a nice one really because that's how a lot of us feel but it will be an emotional moment for these players you know and obviously you know, Andy Robertson during this interview was reflected on the journey he's been on. And he's not the only one who's had to really fight uh, through a bit of adversity. A uh, few people writing him off, you know, he, he got released at, at Celtic and, you know, isn't the only one really who's had the sort of battle to get where he is. So I'm, I'm pleased that they will be emotional because, you know, they, 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 you know, they deserve, you know, that, that kind of recollection, recollection, recollection of everything they've been through. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, John. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just just quickly on the Henderson diddle, there is there is a very quick answer: is to just put him on the bench and bring him on with five seconds to go, <laughs> even if he can't. Man. <laughs> just get him to stand in a corner flag. Like, it's it's just the five chin pads, then, John. So um, <laughs> that, that's that's the answer to that. But yeah, in relation to what you're saying, yeah, I think it's uh, what I think's been really interesting is that there's been a, there's been a quiet narrative around. Um, some quarters of just start the season next season almost straight away as soon as you can as soon as this season finishes start next season they only need a week off they only need two weeks off whatever else these players need a holiday after what they've gone through this season um, they need that reset because people sort of think that three months without playing football in lockdown was in some way a break for them a breather it was mental torture 
Um, so when we talk about a journey, a journey to this title has been the most elongated um, sort of torturous process with the whole null and void stuff in, in recent history for any side and any group of players. Not not to mention a side who've gone 30 years without winning a thing and a team who got 97 points last year and, and still were denied it. So, so in that context, these players must be so... Um, so 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 wait so sort of built up and pent up in terms of waiting for that release to lift this trophy and get that medal because it's it's been something that the, the minute the minute you walk into Liverpool you know the, the minute you walk into Liverpool you've got ex players telling you you've got fans stopping you in the street and telling you you've got everyone telling you we win the, we need to win the league 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 and for them to get there. For them to for them to get there in the way that that they've had to, which is to basically to basically say we need a hundred points plus if we're going to win it. This isn't getting to eighty six points and saying yeah that'll be enough every year. It's to sort of strive for perfection for for nine months, which they were nearly at for three quarters of the way, only for for this pandemic to stop stop the momentum and and, and just sort of make it all a bit of an, a new a new existence in terms of how they won the league. Um, yeah, all of that in- encapsulates, like I said before, this this journey to get into this point, and and it's going to be a massive let off for them. Yeah, it will be a massive let let off for so many of them, Paul. And you know, they've all got the sort of own individual stories and sort of how they got there. But not least, obviously, the captain because he's been on a, a journey just at Liverpool, you know, the ups and downs have been sort of well documented. We're putting something together. I don't think it's, it's given too much away, a little thing for social that'll be out uh, at some point this week. Um, you know, um, because we realise that basically Jordan Henderson's Liverpool career is 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 almost exactly today that the length of uh, the Anfield Raps existence. Um, so we've sort of you know documented. We you know we started some of the 2011 as well. So we've we've sort of documented perfectly almost you know the ups and downs and, and listened to a few of those early shows, uh, which people have been doing for this. I think it's fair to say that. The opinions were mixed on Jordan Henderson in that year. Even, even you know, performances. You know, people arguing over whether he played well or not, or, or you know, whether he was mm-hmm. contributing. And you know, he's aware of all that. He's had all of that. Um, you know, there's the, there's the Fulham business. There's the when he's made captain, and, and was that the right time, and was he sort of the right person? And you know, it is an amazing. I say end. It's not. It's not the end. Hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully, it's no. in many ways it's the start of a new chapter of of him lifting lots and lots of things. But it is, you know, I guess if if the film was to end somewhere, it probably would be Wednesday. Yeah. It is interesting that when you speak to, I'll 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 use the sort of speech marks. New fans, they have no idea, or fans that have been interested in the last few years, and I see that a lot with Living Away. Yeah, they have no idea that we nearly let him go as a make way for Clint Dempsey. No idea. A lot of them have to Google Clint Dempsey because he'd never heard of him. <laughs> so, so, so that was a, a sort of low point. And, and, you know, it should have been a mark as a man where he said, no, I'm going to stay and fight. Um, and, 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 and I'm always interested by people who, who take that sort of behavior. So for me, um, I'm going to do a little plug here. About a week and a half ago, I had a piece up on the site about a written piece about team cohesion. I teach PE and I teach a lot of sort of basic psycho- psychology of, of sport and psychology of teams. And, um, and part of what I said was the way that at the moment Liverpool are really, really good in both aspects of, of cohesion, which is task cohesion and social cohesion. We really like each other. We like the owners. We like the backroom staff. They like each other. And we like the way that we play. And and I don't think his role can be in any way underestimated in that. We've got five players in that team um, that are arguably could walk into any team in the world. Five players. He's not one of them, by the way, but they would jump off a cliff for him. They would yeah. do whatever he told them to do. And that is, to me, a mark of him as a, as a captain, that he manages to 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 lead effectively and they will follow some of the best players that currently play on the planet um 
and yeah, he, he, his role cannot be underestimated. I don't think. That's a really good shout, that isn't it, Johnny? And that you know, for all our talents, which is in the bucketfuls, uh, thankfully, and for you know, for all the sort of you know egos that must be there because you know the the you know the the, the world superstars, and so I'm sure there's a few knocking around there, no matter what they say, but they do see Jordan Henderson as the leader, don't they? They do all sorts of look up to him in many ways, and they do they do follow him out there, and they do trust him, um, you know, explicitly to to do the right thing for them. Yeah, I think I think the um, I think in any team you've got the absolute superstars, and your job is to give them the ball and make the, and make them look good and do the, do their graft. And I, and I think it's, I'm not being unkind to Henderson to say he's not he's not in that group. He's not the yeah. he's not the one that you look out for on the pitch to to make things happen. But he, he's, he's a facilitator and keeps everything going for the rest of the team. And I think that the fact that he's as, as Paula says, surrounded by genuine world superstars like Ballon d'Or top ten footballers and he's got the mutual respect but he doses out bollockings left right and centre and every single one of them takes it from him no, mm. you, don't, you get to no back chat from people saying like, who are you I, I'm ten times the player you are I think he's he, he, he's, a, he's a remarkable character I think he's he, I think he's humble enough about his own, his own ability um, uh, but his contributions to the teams are measurable I think the, the, I think there's there's a number of things that have happened post actually winning the league that, that you can say have potentially contributed to our, our patchy form. Him not being available will definitely be one of the things yeah. that, 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 yeah. that's, feed, that's feeding into our performances, I think, at the moment. And uh, I, look, I'm a bit nervous now thinking about this, vi- this video that John's going to put out when the trophy gets lifted. I'm, I'm imagining what did I say about Jordan Henderson in 2015. <laughs> May have been a little bit frustrated with him, and I, 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 I love the fellow. And that's to say, probably some of the criticisms at that time were not completely um, justified. By the way, I, just a, a very brief thing. I, I, I bought it. Um, I went to a, a charity do a while ago, and I was bidding on one or two items, and I just got outbid every single time on all like reasonably nice big ticket items. It was it was the 2018 season, the season that ended in in, um, in, in, in Kiev. And um, I ended up bidding on because I, I've been given a free ticket to this thing. I wanted to buy something from the auction yeah, yeah. just to, to sort of pay for me dinner, basically. So I ended up bidding on a, on a Jordan Henderson framed sign photograph, right? And so, but, but I'll be dead honest, I kept it in the boot of my car for about like six months because, like, at that particular, even that recent ago, I felt a bit weird having a signed picture of Jordan Henderson anywhere up in my house, even in, in my study, because actually he was, a, he was an undecorated captain to, to a large extent. Yeah. It, was, it was one of those items that could just be like a, an interesting story to tell some point in the future. It's now up in my office, pride the place and on, on display, because he, he, he now is, is up there in the pantheon of Liverpool great captains, and he sealed it not only with his performances, but with the, the honours he's had the, the pleasure to, li- to lift. And as John says, it isn't over for this lad. He's, he's, yeah. he's just turning 30 now. He's, he's, he's got plenty plenty left in him. And you could see him be the Liverpool captain for another four or five years quite easily. And, and God knows what else we could win in that period of time. Yeah, no, I mean, it's we're all hoping this is, you know, the, the, just the start in terms of his, his lifting career, uh, Dan, if you can call it that. Um, you know, and as, as Johnny says, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, there were obviously question marks about, well, you know, is he is he a Liverpool captain? You know, is he is he you know going to end his career? You know, without sort of you know having achieved what what many of them before now, you know, what he's done is almost unique, isn't it? You know, in terms of a, a sort of twelve month period, it's crazy to think, you know, considering you know what we have done in our history. There's something else here, though, John, as well, is that he's player of the year. He's literally he's player of the year. Yeah. And this is, a, this is a team who we're all eulogising about as being one of the greatest in Premier League history. He's been their best player. He's been the best player in this league for a season. And when people want to talk about him, still, I think he still gets sort of done with fame praise, to be honest. I think people think he's a great leader, but I, I still don't think there's the recognition for what a footballer he is. He's moved the ball better than anyone in this side this season. When we talk about tempo... And talk about him setting Liverpool, Liverpool's tempo. He's not just keeping players on the feet. He's moving the ball faster and quicker in mind and in body than either the players he's playing with or against. To do that in this side, to be that quick of mind, to be that technically gifted, 
and then also to be that tactically gifted that he's he's been able to sort of almost become our best number six and our best number eight and people can have Fabinho conversations absolutely yeah I'm happy to have them he's a phenomenal footballer but he has suffered when he's come back from injuries that's that's been unfortunate that he got that knock uh, against Napoli Henderson has has filled the void in both of those positions and looked like the best player on the park for 30 games this season that is unbelievable for for a footballer who we would rightly as the guys say we were talking about when he first came as being maybe a little bit beige in terms of technical ability no one could doubt his 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 output in terms of effort and endeavor but we all wondered sort of what his ceiling was in terms of just what he could do on a football pitch um in terms of impact in a game with his with his natural ability that should be in no doubt now that you know he is he is not only a phenomenal leader but he's a phenomenal footballer his passing from deep is another attribute that even when people were trying to slag him off in 17 18 he could he could he could find he could put the ball on sixpence from 50 60 70 yards and yeah for some reason it just gets passed by but don't ever lose sight of the fact that he's been the best player in this league this season. That that's not an easy thing yeah. to do. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And his performances, you know, do need pointing out as much of his leadership, Paul, because there's been so many great ones this season. And as Dan says, from different positions as well. You know, we've we you know we've debated a lot over the last sort of two three years about where his best position mm-hmm. is, and obviously it's changed this year six. Now, I, th- I actually think moving him around's helped him, whereas uh, maybe a year ago when I wouldn't have said that, I, w- I would have thought, oh, you know, he's, he's being shifted and, you know, he's, 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 it's not allowing him to concentrate on one thing. I actually like him when he goes back to six now. I think he's able to take, you know, what he's what he's got from playing further forward, you know, that dynamism, if you like, and sort of apply it to, to the knowledge he's gained from playing in that position. And I'd have him anywhere in that midfield three now. Yeah, he, he really uses his brain. You can see that he's, he's not just spraying passes, he's thinking and he's, he's directing play. And I think, as Johnny said before, he's not shy of a bollocking both on and off the pitch and you can see it and you can hear it. And I'm loving the way that, I know we're not seeing him at the moment, but I'm loving the way that you can hear the interaction between the players, the way that the games are currently. Um, he's, he, he, is able to direct players and people will listen to him. That's another point as well. They respect not only his sort of captaincy and his ability to sort of take a mature leadership, but they respect his football pedigree and he can direct play and he will, you know, move players around. And I think his his thinking and his planning on the ball is also giving other players the confidence to think that they can also do that. And you can see that in some of the ways that we play, that we, we play passes that shouldn't really, you know, be played, but they work. You know, that three, three touch pass from Alisson, um, right back, left back, centre forward. I think those kinds of plays come from having an intelligent player in the midfield, directing play and giving people confidence to make those choices. Yeah, no, that's completely fair. That's completely fair. And I know, I mean, it'd be interesting to see Jürgen, how Jürgen sort of gets involved after the game, Johnny, because I think Jürgen loves these moments, but he, he almost loves them for the players. Do you know what I mean? And I think I've, I've had a few interviews with people who know Jürgen well uh, recently, and he says these are his favourite moments because he loves seeing how happy everyone else is. You know what I mean? And, and there's obviously the, the statue talk that he tries to put down at all times and things like that. And you, you, you think for him, I mean, look, he's a, he's a big personality. And I think in, in some ways he does sort of enjoy a bit of attention on himself. But I think in others, you know, with these big moments, he'd much rather everyone would be looking at the players and buzzing off the players because I think that's what he'll be doing. Mm. He'll be, he'll be love seeing, seeing the sort of joy in them. Yeah, I, I think I think the, when you listen to Jürgen Klopp speak, and he, he often talks about this is the reward, and, and yeah. part of his job as, as as a leader really, he's, he's got to motivate the players, convince them that, that that his plans got merit, and and that when they get there, the rewards will be worth it, and it's like this virtuous cycle, and it's a virtuous cycle, and I think for him. Wednesday night going well and the players getting absolutely everything. And he wants us to, he wants us to have the best out of it as well, by the way. Yeah. And the parade and all those things. All those things have, have, have sort of confirmed. Um, we've had that cycle of success last year. Winning in Madrid 
was he was able to close that loop once and then make them hungry to do it again. And and it's important that Wednesday gets executed well so that they can push them on to want to replicate it next year and the next year and the next year. Mm-hmm. And different people do it in different ways. We all know that Ronnie Moran would would um, would like throw a medal at somebody and say, uh, "If you've earned the medal, go take a medal." And, and it was always. Um, his motivation was almost down, was downplaying the, the, the occasion. I think Klopp wants the, wants the lads to have the best night of their lives, do you know what I mean? And, and for them to be hungry, to feel that feeling once again. They'll have a, there'll be a point in time, hopefully soon, where we can all get together on a, on a parade type of event and they'll get further reinforcement. That the, the fruits of your labour for this football club are, are unlike anything you'll get anywhere else in the, in the world. And I think for him, they're going to work really, really hard on Wednesday. And, and whenever this parade gets to happen, because as a team, they absolutely get that the, uh, in, in a way that I've, I've not seen since I was a kid, really. The, the, Shanky used to say, didn't he, that they know that they, that they these are people you play for and, and they're proud to play for you. Yeah. I feel like that about this team. I feel yeah, absolutely. They, they, they absolutely get that. And, Klopp is the conductor of that and he reinforces that and it's a bit cheesy to compare him to Shankly but in a way that Shankly was absolutely obsessed with that I think I think, I think Klopp's been able to, to be the closest thing we've had since, since Shankly in that regard so I, I, I'm dead excited for Wednesday night I, I, haven't, I still haven't got a very clear Wednesday night plan but I imagine I'll be crying so crying somewhere <laughs> in front of a telly is probably <laughs> I think it's definitely going to happen I'll be crying out front of the telly the thing we can predict, the thing we can we can, we can certainly predict. Um, yeah, Dan, it's if he for Jürgen, you know, it's it'd be a big moment for him. You know, he's it's it's what he knew he he came to Liverpool to do really, and you know, obviously the European glory was amazing, and you know, it's 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 a bigger trophy than the Premier League one in in in, in most kind of judges, but he'll know that when he comes to Liverpool the. What, you know, I'm sure was the first thing that the Liverpool fans saw, you know, said to him when when they saw him on the streets or whatever. It was it was that league title, and he, he's done it now, and and he'll be reflecting on that his own personal achievements, but also he'll know what it means to sort of every Liverpool fan that we are able to call ourselves the English champions. Yeah, I, I was, I, I can't help but feel, you know, the the time when it got confirmed after the Chelsea City game and. There's just that interview with him, and he's completely overwhelmed. And even he says, "I don't know. I don't. I didn't expect to feel like this. I don't know why yeah. this has hit me the way it has." And I think that's a number of factors. I think it's it's all of the things that the guys have said in terms of doing it for the people. Um, he wants he wants that legacy for us as much as as much as himself and his players. Um, but it, it means. I mean, there's the the whole thing about. Him when he first takes over, and he, you know he gets all the Melwood staff to walk through the the players meeting, and he says, "You know their names because we're all on this journey together." I think he looks at the players, but I think he looks at, you know, he looks at the receptionist on Melwood or the, you know the women in the canteen, and he sees it as being for all of those people as well, all of those people, and, and I think I think it was that responsibility that that completely overwhelmed him. I think it hit him that, you know, he's. He's a humble guy, and and he doesn't want any of the plaudits himself. But I think it, it hit him that you know he sort of put these wheels in motion for this to to happen for all of us. And and he's not only done that, but he's do, he's had, he had to do that, like I said before, against a team that's that's getting essentially a points a season. And I think that that's that's part of what drives him and them emotionally in mm. terms of the let off. I think the fact that they're up against this city side, this behemoth of football that, that people have said is unbeatable. You know, you look back at now, I had to look back at for something with work the other day on the De Spiegel report, leading to the, the cast decision obviously to be overruled. And even the narrative around that from, from the German outlet when they're writing it is, this Manchester City side will rule English football for, for the next decade. It was given, it was taken in stone that that was what was going to happen. So to overcome that is in itself a huge emotional let off. Um, so this manager is, yeah, I, 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 I can't wait for us to have our moment with him because I think it's, I think it's something that is between us, and I think it's something that's built and built and built. And we know that you know he, he doesn't mind dishing a bollocking out to the people behind him in the main stand and stuff like that. But that is all, 
when we talk about journey, that is all journey. That is all us going on a learning experience together. And I think there's there's going to be there's going to have to be that moment where we look him and these players in the eye and, and we we sort of say, yeah, we've done it. And until then, you know, we, we're not going to be able to do it properly. But we'll settle for what we've got now, and I'm sure he'll um, he'll look forward and and put that moment in the diary too. Absolutely, yeah. But before all that, there's a match, Paula. There's a game of football. Um, <laughs> and they'll want to win How it. How inconvenient. <laughs> but they will want to win it, won't they? Because, you know, it's it, the whole thing will be so much better, you know, if they are coming back from, from a good victory. Um, so how do we win this game? How do they approach it? Can we hope for something similar to Palace again, do you think, when they, when they put in, as Yang said, the, the best performance ever seen in front of no fans? Um, can we expect something <laughs> similar? Obviously, will Chelsea allow that because they're a better team than Palace? And Chelsea have got a lot to play for as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the Chelsea game's an interesting one because obviously I think, I think we'd have been having a very different conversation had they not reached the final. However, their top four place isn't yet guaranteed, so they mm-hmm. do need the points. They can't afford to drop them, if if at all possible. Um, you know, it's the last game of the season, or, and, and I, I'm going to say, sort of, although injuries don't matter, they do matter in that if someone goes all, you know, full pelt for a victory and we get a few muscle strains, we don't, we, we don't have as long of a close season as we could have expected. The Arsenal defeat um, both in in actuality and in the manner of the defeat will have stung it will have stung really badly and he'll want to put that right and I think the players will want to put that right they will want to win they'll they won't set up I don't think for a sort of you know stalemate play it around the middle and go on the counter-attack they will want to win so uh, you know I do think that the the trophy They'll want to win and carry that win onto the trophy presentation. I don't think they'll be planning to go up there off a, off a stale nil-nil or one or. So, you know, I, I think they'll go out for a victory, even though Chelsea will try and stop them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll go strong on the pitch in terms of team selection, yeah, Johnny. Definitely. You know, it's, it's been, a, it's been a, a week, obviously, since we've played, so everyone should feel fresh. Uh, there's a midfield question. Uh, John Henderson's only playing the last five seconds of the game. Um, Dan sorted that. So, so there's a, there's a starting place up for grabs there. You would have thought. Uh, I don't know what what you you what you go for and what your approach would be. Um, I, 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 it's a good question. I, I think uh, undoubtedly we've got we've got to go strong. I think it would be it would be uh, Liverpool of old sort of trope for us to, to go and pick up the trophy after getting beat it would just do just do my head in completely I mean the, yeah. I think like the last day of the cop getting beat by bloody Nor- Norwich yeah. Yeah. All, the pomp, yeah. all the pomp and ceremony it would be, it would be, it'd be a real uh, so I think you've got to go out and you've got to do the best to win it and clearly Chelsea have uh, had less time off than we have so maybe they'll be a little bit tired than our players but I think, I think in, in midfield I think you'd, you'd want to see Fabinho um, in, in the number six role I'd like like to see Genie in the team. Uh, I think I think Oxley Chamberlain's been a bit patchy since he's come back. I think he's had some good spells in games, but I don't think he's he's put together a, a, a good. Uh, I don't think he's been given a full ninety. He always seems to get substituted. So mm. I'm not I'm, I'm not sure who would give that final that, that final bear to Milner still injured is he? Uh, I think he is. I don't think he'll start. I don't think he'd start yeah. on there. I think he's hoping to be involved. No. Because, 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 I, because I think with, with um, you, you you always feel with with James Milner and Henderson they're like the grown ups on the pitch aren't they really you, you sort of bring bring a bit more um, rigidity and discipline to the rest of the team but but I, I, I'd be confident that this if this Liverpool team hits its straps it's good enough for absolutely anybody in this league and we wouldn't be where we are now if that wasn't that wasn't the case I think the um, um, I've I've been a bit frustrated watching us up front, um, and that's not because we've been creating ample chances to kill these games off. And I just think either uh, what I can't work out is whether we're, whether we're too casual or or too um, um, too keen on, on trying to get get these golden boots going. Because I think the, the chances that we let we had go begging in football matches in the last few weeks, I've, I've got money on both. Uh, I've had money for a long time on both Salah. And money for the for the golden boots, and it's been so frustrating to watch because he could have been home and hosed by now. But, uh, <laughs> um, the, 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 the inability to just put the ball in the back of the net has been 
so frustrated. And obviously, Bobby needs to break his home duck as well. Yeah. Um, and this is going to be his, going to be his, his last chance. And I just think um, in that final half a second in the box, we just seem to be making some pretty poor decisions. I mean, against Burnley, I was I was watching that game, and um, Pope got a lot of plaudits for his performance in goal. And I I, I thought he did okay, but I, I think the, the, the save, the volley save from um, from Salah was a, was a good height for him, sort of shoulder height. It wasn't in the corners or anything. So I think none of the saves he made, I was thinking, uh, like Gordon Banks, they, they were, they, they, he played okay. So I'd really like to see our, our forwards um, click and, and, and really, uh, I think Chelsea are a good side, but we've got more than enough to, to topple them if we can, if we can get, our, um, get our front three playing as they should. <coughs> Chelsea got a lot of miles under the clock since they come back as well, Dan. I've noticed it's their seventh game in July alone, uh, which is a lot. Right. <laughs> um, and, you know, they, they've rotated a little bit, um, but the spine of the team has largely remained unchanged. And, you know, in terms of because of, you know, injuries and things like that, there's a few players who, who might have had to play a little bit more than they thought. Uh, if our intensity is right and we are able to go at it, approach it, like we started the Arsenal game, um, to be fair, um, we could get on top of them, I think. Yeah, I think being fair, I think I think the intensity isn't something that we've seen drop off. I think there is a, there is an argument around after the first drinks break in terms of concentration, but I don't think there's been a lack of endeavour. I think I think there's definitely obviously a, a sort of subconscious mental thing placed in there that the shackles are off a little bit and um, and the playing and, and that that sort of just dropped at one or two percent. And, and with this team, that's massive, and we've seen that. So I think I think it's it's potentially going to be a really good game, in the sense that I think that Chelsea will come, um, will have aspirations of coming to win the game because they need to first and foremost. Um, so they'll come with a plan to, to sort of get at Liverpool and turn Liverpool around. And I agree with Johnny. I think I think sort of the front three, are, the midfield is, is sort of the least of my worries really, is because I know that whoever he picks in there, they will. They will keep tempo. They will put put the miles in. They will, you know, look to be sharp and uh, and be positionally sound. I think I think where to talk about concentration. We've seen it obviously cost us. It was to our detriment against Arsenal, and we've seen it in the last few games in terms of the front three just sort of being a little bit too casual for my liking in front of goal. Um, and I think I, I want to see them a little bit pissed off. To be honest, John, I want to see them a little bit angry that they've sort of. They're sort of being questioned to a degree about, you know, knocking off and stuff like that as champions. And, and, and I'd like to see a, a sort of ruthless performance front and back. Um, and that's, I think that's that's arguably harder in defensive areas. We see with David De Gea at the weekend, if you if your concentration just lapses a second, it, it's all the more costly. It's all right missing chances and saying the next one will come, um, especially in a team that creates them like we do. But, you know, if you... To make a, an error as glaring as Virgil van Dijk or Allison did, it's not it's not really in their character. So it shows that those types of errors can creep in if you if your mind isn't one hundred percent on the task and, and sort of in the mindset of I have to win, I have to win. So I would think there is the, the potential that they could they could still leak goals, but I think if I'm being hopeful, the front three are, are sort of in the mindset of no, we go. We go and show here a bit that you know we put chances away early, and and for me there, there could be a lot of goals in this game. Yeah, it could be. Uh, quick score predictions before we go, then Paula. Mm, I'm going to go two one cowardly. I think it's going to be. <laughs> I think it's going to be way more nervy than we than we think or hope. Oh, hey, Johnny. Four one. Brilliant. Much better, Dan. <laughs> I'm going to go for a mad three three. Oh, that free thing! <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what, I mean, I tell you what, the Polish Navy's two ones. None is not sounding too bad after all. Um, <laughs> but yeah, wherever you're watching it on Wednesday, do enjoy it. Uh, we're going to be doing commentary on Hot Mic. Um, so if you haven't joined us on Hot Mic yet, do it's good fun. Uh, it's a nice uh, alternative uh, to Martin Tyler um, trying to ruin everything. Um, so um, so if you want to join us, uh, you just watch it on on your normal pictures and our, and we do our commentary and it syncs up on your up to your mobile phone or mobile device. 
device. Um, so if you want to download Hot Mic, just make sure you use the code and field wrap when you download it. It's completely free. And uh, myself and Neil will be doing the commentary on Wednesday night. Obviously, there'll be all the post-match reaction stuff for you subscribers as well on audio and video. Uh, and just a couple of other things to look out for today on our subscription uh, audio. Uh, we've got a gutter show being recorded today. So you might think, why haven't they talked about Tiago and all the other transfer stuff? That's all on the gutter show. So don't worry. Uh, we, we can't possibly take that away from Rob. Uh, and also, um, if you want our uh, interpretation of what happened over the weekend uh, results, I don't know how the Manchester clubs got on, uh, but uh, Neil Atkinson does now, and he did a show on that first thing uh, in the morning. And we're doing those every day at the moment, the morning after, because it's football every day. So that's something to look forward to as well. But in the meantime, huge thanks to Paula, to Johnny and to Dan. Hope you've enjoyed that. That's been the Anfield Wrap. Up the Reds.